Welcome to Z Classroom. In this video, we'll be exploring masking. There are many reasons why you would use masking inside ZBrush. You can use it to isolate parts of geometry, for sculpting, and finally for texturing. For the purposes of this video, we're going to see how to paint a mask, how to invert a mask, and finally, how to clear a mask. For now, We'll stick to the basics. The first thing to realize about masking is that the area you're going to be masking will appear as a dark region on your model. You can achieve this by holding the control key and simply painting over your model. This will give you tremendous control over whatever patterns or shapes you choose to mask. The RGB intensity slider is set to 100% and as such, the masked area cannot be affected. It's important to note that the area being masked will remain uneditable. Essentially, you're isolating that area of the model from any changes you make to the surrounding areas. Here, you can see how the standard brush is not affecting the masked region. You'll no doubt want to isolate an area of your model with the masking functions and still want to have control over the masked area. A great way to achieve this happens when we incorporate the invert function over whatever region of the model you're masking. You can invert a mask by hovering over an open area of your canvas and simply holding the control key down while clicking. You can achieve a high degree of precision by using the mask function and then inverting the mask. With that being said, you can start to see some of the potential for powerful methods of sculpting and modeling by using masking and inverting masks. Along with the shortcuts, you can also inverse by clicking on the Inverse tab inside of the masking palette. You can also erase a mask. To unmask an already masked region, hold down the Control and Alt keys. Here, you can see we can achieve some design elements by using the Unmask function holding again the Control and Alt keys. Think of it as erasing the mask in a controlled fashion with a style objective in mind. For now, if you wanted to, for instance, clear the mask, you would simply hover over an open area of your canvas while holding the control key and clicking and dragging. We have until now used the standard brush and the dot stroke. ZBrush allows you the freedom to change not only your brush types, but your stroke, as well as apply an alpha to your masking. To ensure that the stroke and alpha are changed for the purposes of masking, be sure to hold down the control key while you select the alpha and or stroke type. This will ensure that when you hold the control key to apply a mask, the selected alpha and stroke type will be activated. In this case, we'll use the drag rect stroke and alpha 62. By holding the control key, we can draw out our alpha as our mask onto our model. This opens up the possibilities for achieving higher levels of detail when sculpting on your model. We can take this concept further by inverting the mask with the alpha applied and using our standard brush and dot stroke to use the alpha as a stencil. You may also choose to draw the mask using the alpha and drag rect from anywhere on the canvas. For instance, let's start from this area off the model and simply hold the control key and drag out the mask onto the model. The masking subtool palette has a lot of functionality with options like masking by intensity, mask by cavity, and masking by ambient occlusion. For now, we'll stick to the blur function and the sharpen mask function. The blur function allows you to soften the edges of your masks, thereby giving you less pronounced or defined edges. To blur a mask, Simply hold control and click on the mask. You'll notice the edges of your mask become less pronounced. To sharpen the mask, hold control and alt and click on the mask. You'll see that the edges become more intense or more defined. You could simply draw out a mask and use the blur mask button or the sharpen mask button here inside the masking palette. 